Just went and saw My Hero Academia, Your Next, which is the newest movie. This one takes place, it seems like right after the Vigilante arc of the show. Overall, it was fine. If you like the other movies, you'll probably enjoy it. This kind of has the same problem that the rest of them have, where all of the movies take place kind of in between seasons or in between events that have already been covered in the show. So the stakes are kind of eh. You know, you can do prequels where it feels like there's high stakes or interquels or whatever these are called. They don't really try to go for that, though. They kind of do the thing where like, oh, the whole world's going to end if they lose. And when you go that big and we know the story continues, it's like, okay, then. The movies also all have the same issue for the ending where it just seems like everything has to be massive. So they all just end up with everything exploding. (laughs) Overall, it was fun. I was actually talking to my wife as we left the theater, and it's probably the best movie I've seen in theater in months, which really speaks to the sad state of how bad movies are right now. I'll try to keep it vague and not really give any spoilers. So let's just get into like the gist of the plot. So the gist of the plot is there's a guy in Europe, and he's the head of essentially the mafia. And his ability is sort of Green Lantern-esque, which is pretty neat. But then you also kind of wonder, like, why has there not been issues with this guy before? Because he's pretty powerful. And they try to give an explanation in the movie. Not certain how well it functions, but whatever. He calls himself Dark Might. So I think what you're getting is a sort of bizarro Superman-inspired type story. You have this guy pretending to be All Might. He kind of wants to hijack the symbol of peace moniker, but for his own ends, obviously, because he's a villain and a mob boss. I like the idea. And they do a pretty good job of, you know, at least touching on the main themes. And in this one, it's pretty apparent and they make it very obvious that the point is power just for the sake of power doesn't really mean much and can be used for evil. The reason that All Might was powerful was because he had a goal and an idea that he wanted to push forward for society and the betterment of it. Very in line with the rest of my hero, obviously. The centerpiece for Deku and his part is what it does it mean to be a hero Kind of the same stuff the show touches on a lot. And then the other component is a love story between Anna and Julio. And I actually think that part is the more interesting part of the movie. Just because it's a movie, you kind of don't know how it's going to end. Because obviously these characters are never going to show up again in the main story since we've already surpassed them in the timeline. And that at least gives the option of, you know, if you want to have a little bit of a darker ending and have someone die, you can use these characters that you brought in just for the movie. So the potential is there either way. And then they bring in new quirks and abilities and they try to kind of explain those away at the end because some of them were like world altering abilities. There's some good humor in there. Bakugo is my favorite. I think he's hilarious. I think his character arc along with Todoroki and his whole family is the most interesting. And I guess maybe it's a little bit unfair to Deku to say he's uninteresting as much as just his is more conventional. I like the aspect of Bakugo and Todoroki who start off with other goals or other motivations that aren't quite as puristic as Deku, and then you get to see their whole journey. And that makes them much more dynamic characters overall than just the pure, good-hearted, I want to be a hero and save everyone type, which you know works, I think, for the series. I mean, obviously, I've watched and read the whole thing. It just makes for a less interesting character, that's all. Another aspect of the world building that is good to see is that the main villain group is a European gang, like crime syndicate. So it's always nice when my hero steps out into the other countries and the other parts of the world, and you get more of the story, and it's not all just focused on Japan. But I know the show is limited because obviously you're seeing everything around Deku and Class A's perspective, so it's primarily going to be in Japan. One thing that I thought the movie did that was really interesting and I liked was to see the parallel between the villain and Deku, where they're both obsessed with All Might, but one wants to hijack his image for his own gains, and the other is just inspired by him. And even in the movie, at one point, Bakugo says, we all looked up to All Might, he was our idol. Like, you're not him. I thought it was nice to see what it could look like for someone who got inspired by All Might, but then took it the wrong way, or for their own means, or whatever the case is. So that was good. But beyond that, yeah, not too much to say. Really simple, straightforward movie. I'm not going to go too long on this one. I mean, it's another essentially bottle movie, where they're isolated in this one-off kind of scenario so it doesn't impact the main story. It's fun to see the action, the good animation, all that shit. If you like the other movies, you'll probably enjoy it. Worth checking out. If you don't care for the movies, you're not going to miss anything because it's not tied to the rest of the story. If you enjoy it, it's fun. Get out of the house, support the show, whatever. I'm later here for this one. If you've seen it, let me know what you think. I try to respond to all the comments that aren't just insults. 
like and subscribe and all that shit. Thanks. See ya.